Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to continue on with adding phasers. And in this particular case, I've got an example here. I'm going to add these two phasers together. We've got uh, 100 volts at 60 degrees and another one 130 volts at 170 degrees. And I want to do this together with you. Okay, so anytime I have a phaser addition uh, question, I'm going to start by drawing the phasers. Okay, now I fully understand that you don't need to draw the phaser. You could probably do all the math without looking at the phasers, but there are going to be times when having the phasers in front of you are going to help a lot. All right. And so if I could recommend one thing to you right now is that that would be always draw the phasers. They're not hard to draw. Everything is easier if you've got the phasers in front of you. Okay, guys, everything. And these questions aren't going to get easier. Okay, they're going to get harder. And so if you get used to you know phasers now then you'll just be automatically do phasers and it'll always help always help to have the phasers sitting there in front of you so you can figure out what to do next all right guys so here's my two uh, phasers and I'm going to draw them all right guys and uh, here's my little phaser world here I've got 100 volts it's at 60 degrees there's zero degrees there's 90 degrees so 60 degrees is right here so I'm gonna draw it and it doesn't matter which, I could draw this one first, okay? It wouldn't matter at all, all right, guys? But I usually draw the first one first and then the second one second, okay? So there's my 100 volts at 60 degrees, all right? And there it is. Now, the other phaser, which is 130 volts at 170 degrees, well, here's zero, here's... 90 here's 180 that phaser is going way out this way somewhere okay guys but i have to move it tip to tail so i'm going to do that right now i mean i could draw it there but then i'd have to move it anyway so i'm just going to drop it right draw it right now where it's going to end up so it makes the whole drawing a little neater okay guys so uh, here's my little phaser it's 10 degrees off of it's right there okay so here it is and it's going to be longer than this one, 30% longer, okay? So something like that, maybe, so like that. Here's my 130 volts at 170 degrees, all right? Now, the resultant, guys, is going to be this baby blue line. It always starts at the beginning of the first one, which should be right at the corner here, out to the end of the last one, okay? So there's my resultant, guys. Now, a lot of students look at that and go like, what kind of triangle is that? It's not a triangle. Well, it is, but it's not a triangle that we care about. Here's the triangle that we care about, okay? It's got a vertical component. And it has a horizontal component. And this baby blue triangle, we can ignore this now, okay? Don't worry about these other two phasers anymore. There's our right angle triangle. There's the result we're trying to work out. There's its horizontal component. There's its vertical component. So let's try to figure this out. I'm going to calculate the horizontal component right here. And it is phaser one, cosine of its angle, plus phaser two, cosine of its angle. Horizontal components, they're always adjacent sides, and they're always using cos because of ka, okay? So ka toa, okay? So it is phaser one, Cosine 60 plus phaser 2, cosine 170. All right? Don't even worry about it. Just hammer it in there. 100 cos 60 plus 130 cos 170 equals. It's minus 78. Point. O3, okay, if I want to get fussy. There it is, minus 78.03. Now I want you to notice that the number is negative, and the number is negative because it's over here. Because positive numbers are always going to be out this way, positive numbers will be up, negative numbers will be over here to the left, negative numbers down, okay? So this is the center, positive out here, negative, positive negative okay so the fact that that came out negative is perfect that's exactly where it's sitting the vertical component I'm going to calculate as well it's going to be phaser one 
sine of its angle plus phasor 2 sine of its angle. Okay, sine 170, that's what that's supposed to say. So I'm going to pound this into my calculator carefully because this is where a lot of mistakes get made when you're hammering all this stuff in. It's coming out to as 109.2, okay? And that is right here, 109.2. All right, and these don't usually have units. All right, guys, they're just they're they're just numbers. We don't care about them that much, except for they help us to calculate the resultant. All right, so the resultant. This is a right angle triangle now. Should be the square root of seventy eight point oh three plus one oh nine point two. Now notice that I ignored the negative sign here, and that's because if you take a negative number and square it, the number is going to be positive anyway. All right, minus two squared is four. Two squared is four, all right? But my calculator, stupidly, if I put in here minus two and hit squared, okay, it's gonna think the answer is minus four. See that? And that's wrong, so don't do that. When you're doing Pythagorean theorem, just put the number in positive. Your calculator might mess you up if you put it in as a negative number. So 78.03, okay guys, 78.03 squared plus 109.2 squared equals root equals 134 okay see how easy that is 134.2 and that's volts the sum of these two voltages guys is 132.4 all right volts one more thing to calculate and that is the angle the angle is the opposite over the adjacent inverse tan. The vertical component will always be the opposite. The horizontal component will always be the adjacent. All right. Shift tan. Now, notice now that I did put the negative sign in there. When you're doing Pythagorean theorem, oops, these are supposed to be squared, right? When you're doing Pythagorean theorem, leave it out when you're doing the angle leave it in all right guys so i've left it in there now 109.2 divided by minus 78.03 equals shift 10 equals it says the angle is minus 54.45 degrees now that is wrong all right guys and why is it wrong because if I look at this thing here's zero degrees here's 90 degrees you know there's no way that that blue line is at minus 54 degrees in fact minus 54 degrees is down here somewhere okay because positive angles this is minus 90 it's 270 it's also minus 90 so minus 54 is over there now why is it that the trig got the angle wrong well it's because the trig is stupidly calculating this little angle right here it sees its right angle triangle and it's trying to figure out what this angle is right here from here up to here and i don't care about that angle i'm your teacher and i'm telling you you have to give me this angle i mean that 170 was off of here this 60 was off of here i want to know what that is off of here all right and how do I do that? Well, I got to add 180 degrees. It's the 180 degrees that the trig is calculating wrong. You know, it's calculating off the 180 degree line instead of off of the zero line. So I have to just add plus 180, okay? And, you know, usually at this point, oops, minus 54.45 plus 180 equals... It is 125.55 degrees, all right, guys? Or 4 or 5 degrees. No, 5, 5 degrees, okay? And that's close enough. And I believe that. I mean, it's past 90, but it's not to 270. It's sitting here at 125 degrees. 
Now, normally students go like, Van Ando, okay, you're out of your mind, okay, because I can't figure out what you're doing here. You didn't add 180 degrees the last example, and it's true. We didn't add 180 degrees on this example, and we didn't add 180 degrees on this example, and that's because for both these two examples, the trig was calculating it off the zero line, okay? And so I didn't have to mess with the angle. It was the correct angle. It's when the trig is calculating it off of this 180 line that I have to just hit plus 180. Now, you know, how are you going to know? Well, let me tell you, you're going to have drawn the phasers. All right, guys, that's one of the big reasons why you need to draw the phasers because if you don't draw the phasers and you just go, oh, I can do this, Hunter, you know, calculate the horizontal, calculate the vertical, calculate the result, and calculate the angle, boom, hand it in, go home, do something else, all right? But without having drawn the phasers, you won't know where this phaser is. And I'm going to tell you right now, if that phaser is to the left of this vertical line here, guys, you always got to add, add the 180 degrees, always. Because if it's to the right of the vertical line, it'll calculate it off the zero. If it's to the left of the vertical line, it's going to calculate it off the 180 line. And you just add 180. Don't overthink it, guys. If you see that the phaser is to the left of this vertical line, hit plus 180 equals, and you will get the right answer. All right, guys? Uh, I know it's terrible. And, uh, eh, pretty soon you'll go like, oh, yeah, I remember all this. All right? Or maybe you've already said that. It's going to be one more lesson after this for today, and that is going to be on subtracting phasers. Okay? So come back for that.